Question number 15. A five-sided spinner is numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ashraf spun the spinner 200 times. The results are shown in the table below. Okay, so we have five sides, and then the number of times it lands on 1 is 30, uh, on 2 is 25, 3 is 50, 4 is 55, 5 is 40. Part A. Calculate the relative frequency that the spinner ha lands on 3. So relative frequency is just the probability. So how many times did the spinner land on 3? 50 times. So 50 over 200 times. That will be um, 1, 1 over 4. So 1 quarter of the time will be 0 0.25 times. So that is your answer, 0 0.25. Now moving on to uh, part B, we have Miriam spins the spinner 20 times. That's a new set. How many times you would expect the spinner to land on 3? I would expect 0 0.25 multiplied by 20, which is 1 over 4 times 20, that will be 5. So I would expect the spinner to land 5 times on number 3 based on this uh, relative frequency. So now moving on to part C. Ashraf claims my results show that the spinner is fair. Is his claim correct? So the answer is no. Because if the spinner was fair, every frequency will be equal. It would not be different if the spinner was fair. Everything will be, so we have five sides, it will be 40, 40, 40, 40, if that makes sense. So you would say, uh, no, because if the spinner was fair, the frequency would almost be the same for each side, for each or every side. So yep, yeah, that's the answer. Number 16. So we have a boat travels from P to Q. At Q, it turns through 90 degrees and travels to R, as shown in this diagram, right? So it then returns from R to Q and Q to P, right? So we know that PQ is 6 and QR is 9, okay? So the first part of the journey from P to Q to R, so that is the first part from P to Q to R, it takes 3 hours. And the second part of the journey from R to Q to P, it takes 2 hours. So in total, so let's say for the round trip, for, the, for it to go and come back, it takes 5 hours in total. Yeah, okay. So the first question is, calculate the average speed for the whole journey from P to Q to R and back from R to Q to P. So what is the total distance that he traveled? So at first we went from R P to Q, 6, and Q to R, 9, and coming back, 9, 6. So we have 6 plus um, 9, that's for the first part of the journey, and then we have 9 plus 6 for the second part of the journey. So it will be what? 15 plus 15, that will be 30. That's the total distance covered. So find the average speed. Average speed it will be total distance will be 30. Divided by total time will be 5. That will be 6. So your answer will be 6 km per hour. That will be the average speed. So now part B. We have the bearing of Q from P is 40. Calculate the bearing of R from Q. So the bearing of R from Q. R is here from Q. So we have to draw a straight line. So we need to find this angle. So this angle until this. So we know that this angle is 40 and this is these two are parallel. So this is 40, this will be 40 as well. So the angle from Q 
the bearing from Q to R is 40 plus 90. So that will be 40 plus 90. That will be 130. So the bearing from of R from Q will be 130. And now we have to calculate the part two, the bearing of P from Q. So from Q of P. So we have to calculate this angle. So this whole angle and so here. Right. So this is 90. This is a straight line. So if this is 90, this will be 90 as well. So this is 180 plus 40. That will be the bearing. So we have the bearing will be 180 plus 40, which will be 220. So the answer will be 220 degrees for the bearing of P from Q. Question number 17. So we have 120 equal to 2 power 3 times 3 times 5. Okay, part A. Express 1200 as the product of its prime factors. So we have to use this to find this prime factors. So what is this? It is equal to 120 times 10, right? So we know that 120 is what? 120 is 2 power 3 times 3 times 5. And now what is the prime factors of 10? 2, 5 times 2 times 5 so that will become 2 power 4 times 3 times 5 power 2 and that is your answer okay so part b find the smallest value of n such that 120 times n is a square number so we know that 120 is equal to 2 power 3 times 3 times 5 so what value n can we multiply by 120 to have a square number so square number means it is um it can have a square root right it is divisible uh, we can multiply it by half it will give us a correct number so so we see that the powers of the number is so we have three times three power one times 5 power 1. So we need to make this even for it to become a square number. So we need to add 1 here. We need to add 1 here as well. We need to add 1 here. So it means that we need to multiply this number by 2 times 3 times 5 so that it can become 2 to the power 4 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 2 and like this you can actually this is actually a square number because if you apply half it will give us an exact value we will get 3 times 5 an exact value so the number is this n is equal to this number here so what is this number 2 times 3 is what 6 6 times 5 is 30 so n equal to 30 that's your answer Question number 18. So the four interior angles of a hexagon are given to you. So these are the four interior angles. So we need to know how many sides we have for a hexagon. We have six sides. So what is the sum of angles of the hexagon? It will be six minus two times 180. That's the total for the angle inside for all the angles inside the hexagon so we have the the two the remaining two angles are equal to each other let's call it uh, x the angles so we have two x right so because they are the same calculate the size of one of these interior angle we need to find x so what do we know we know that 100 plus 110 plus 120 plus 140 plus 2x equal to so 6 minus 2 is 4 times 180 which is equal to so 180 times 4 that will be 0 32 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 7 720 
So that's the uh, sum of all the angles, and we have 2x here. And we have 100 plus 110. That will be 210 plus 120. That will be what? Plus 120 will be, um, so 3, 330 plus 140 will be what? So it will be 0, 7, 4. So 470 plus 2x equal to 720, 2x equal to 720 minus 470. So 720, 470. We have 0, we have 6, we have 10, 5, 2. So 2x equal to 250. So x equal to 125. So that's the answer for this question. Question number 19. So the first question is to measure angle A, B, C. So we have to use our tool to measure the angle A, B, C. So this angle I measured is I got the answer 96 for my angle. You have to use your, uh, your tool to measure this angle. So I just don't have it. That's why I'm skipping the question, but um, that's the answer. So the range will be from 96 to 98 will be the answer. That's pretty simple to do. You guys can do it. Now part B. We have in this part, use a pair of compass and a straight edge only. So construct the bisector of angle BAC. So we have to construct the bisector of this angle. So we have to use a compound pass and a ruler. So we have to go to point A. So I'll go to point A and then we have to make an arc, make an arc that intersects both line. So once you do that, you go to this intersection, you make another arc, you go to this intersection, you make another arc. So once you have that, you can join your point A to the arc. So that will be the bisector of angle BAC, great. So now part two. We have to construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. So the line AB, we have to construct that bisector of the line. So the first thing we do is we take our compass, we go to point A, and then we make a knock on this side and on this side. Right. And then we go to point B, we make another arc on this side and arc on this side. Okay, you will see the intersection of this point and this point. So you have to join them. So that will be, once you join those two points, you will have this line, and this line is the perpendicular bisector of A, B. And that is your answer for, for part two. Okay, great.